ask you a question. Hear me now. Did you know that in 2024, February the 4th, 2024, in this world, it is illegal, listen to me, to read, have, or share, or distribute the Bible in 52 countries. Let me say it again. I'm a commitment. Today, February the 4th, 2024, we'll deal with this in Bible study. I'll show you the map in the cities, in the states, in the countries, that it is illegal to distribute, read, share, talk about the Bible in 52 countries. Yet, in those 52 countries where it is illegal to distribute, talk about, possess, share, allude to this, in those 52 countries, where well, it's dangerous. There are people, Christians, in spite of this being illegal, dangerous, you could get killed, you could be ostracized from your family, you could cost the life of your children by sharing, reading, owning, or alluding to this book in 52 countries as of today and it's probably going to go up. But yet we got Christians doing it. That's right. So the question becomes why would they? Why? Why? Would they risk in Muslim countries being barred from your family? Atheist countries annihilated and killed. Not just you, you and your family. Why would they risk it? I submit to you, they are totally committed. They are totally committed. Now as we do this series, I'm not going to get personal. But I tell you, I, I hope that you come back. I hope after the day you ain't no one and done. Like the Buffalo Bills, one and done. <laughs> I just had to get it in. Just had to get it in the Bill fans. Come on. Uh, he ain't never won on the road. Well, he won in Buffalo. I'm sorry. Stop it. Stop it. I hope and pray that you are not turned off. This series is going to challenge you. And on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, I will give tests if you're serious about growing. But it's only going to help you if you're honest with yourself. Please. Please be honest. If you're not honest with yourself, it's like going to a doctor and lying. What's wrong with you? Oh, you got that cough? You smoke? No. 
The doctor can only help you if you tell your doctor he or she every day. It should be the same way with your pastor. And you should not be judged. We will not judge you. I will not put you down. Any pastor worth his salt job is not to destroy but to lift up. Yeah. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, to edify. So I am going to challenge you and you might think that Pastor Brooks is talking about me. I'm not, but I want you to be true to yourself. The only way you're going to be blessed by this series. The only way. Crucial question number one. Are you deluding yourself? Before I get started on the scriptures, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you deluding yourself? What is deluding? Deluding yourself is you are delusional. You are allowing yourself to believe something that is not true. And I'm with you, again, I'm not trying to judge you, because I'm there, I'm there. I will not get on the scale now. I won't. Last year when I lost 60, I was on the scale every button. Four and 60 pounds, 60. Now when I see the scale, I'll be like, why y'all got this here? <laughs> hey, boy, did I tell you to move the scale? Eating a snicker. <laughs> Because I don't want to deal with what the scale got to tell me. I'd rather live in fantasy land and think I'm where I was. I ain't all that. <laughs> but I am going to challenge you spiritually to get on the scale. Hmm. Ushers, lock the doors. <laughs> are you deluding yourself? As a Christian, are you allowing yourself to believe something you know not true? Unfortunately, too many Christians are deluding themselves. They think they are totally committed because they work in the church, because they come to church, because they come to Sunday school, because they come to Bible study, because they give generously, and they say, I am totally committed. I'm saying, are you? Some Christians believe that they are totally committed because, uh, uh, because uh, they, they, uh, they, 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 no, some Christians believe that they know that they're not totally committed, I'm sorry, but they put up a front. And they make others believe, Terry, that they are committed. And they would rather live in this delusional world that you believe I'm super spiritual than for me to reveal that you're not. And I'm not trying to talk about you. You always got scriptures on your phone. You got your Bible. You quote scriptures out of context. People don't know who they are. You say, I ain't worried about nothing. Yeah, you are. You're on Zantax and everything else. But you want people to believe that you trust in God for everything. But you ain't praying. You ain't, what's the name? You shacking. You live in any kind of way. You know you're not committed. You doing what you want to do. But when you come into the public, you put this public face on. You say all the Christianese stuff, highly faithful and blessed. I'm pressing on the upward way. Jesus is my savior, but you don't even talk about Jesus until you get to church. So you are deluding yourselves, but yet the circle of fear that you have, everybody else says you are a super Christian. Is that you? Some of us are deluding ourselves to believe we're totally committed because we use excuses. You study your Bible, you do stuff, but you say stuff like this and we'll deal with it more in debt on Wednesday. I really can't be totally sold out because my job. I don't have enough time. I got to take care of my children. Or I got church hurt. The church hurt me. So therefore, I can't come back 
to church. The grocery store hurt me every time I go through. They get deep in my pocket, but I keep coming back. The doctor hurt me when they see me that bill, but I keep coming back. Help me, Holy Ghost. But when you come to the church, I'm not saying church hurt ain't real. But you say, I'm really committed. I don't do those things. Uh, my past hurts, my schedule. I, uh, but you say you're totally committed to the Lord, but yet you're using all these excuses why you can't come to church, why you can't do these things. Because you say, mm, I got to take care of my family. I got to do that. Next group, and I'm going to get into the scriptures. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me challenge you a little bit. There's another group who says they're totally commuted, they're deluding themselves because they say stuff like this here. I just don't think it takes all that. I mean, I'm at church every now and then. I give something. I just ain't no fanatic. It don't take. Why they got to go to Sunday school and church? Come on, come on. I mean, well, I got to be every year. I mean, ain't the same thing happening on Easter every year? He getting up every year. I mean, it don't take all that now. I'm a Christian and God knows my heart. Your heart is wickedly deceitful. But you delude yourself because you say, I'm a Christian. And you say stuff like, I ain't got to come to church. I ain't got to get involved just to be totally committed. You are deluding yourself. So therefore, you like to live in this, uh, this fantasized, delusional world that I'm totally committed, but yet you're using excuse. Then there's the last group. And there's the last group that says, I know I'm not totally committed, but yet I desire to be totally committed. But I don't know how to be totally committed. And every time I try to be totally committed, something gets in my way. I fall down, but I get back up. Sometimes I stop coming. Sometimes I come up short. But in my heart, I desire to be totally sold out to the Lord. And I ain't going to put on no fronts. I ain't trying to fake nobody. I ain't trying to come up with no excuse. Uses. It's me. I'm the one who ain't no good. I'm here today, and I want you to teach me how to be totally. I wonder if we got any of those. I wonder if we got any of those in the house. I submit to you those people. This is, I'm still in my introduction. You need to understand this about total commitment. We're going to dive into on Wizzy. What would make a missionary leave the conference of the United States where you could be a Christian to do any kind of thing to go to a country where they say, if you dare open up that book, I'll kill you and your family. What is it that they have? What are they totally committed to? Sharing the gospel? Helping others? And I submit to you, no. They are committed. They're committed. And we'll do it even more so next week. But I'm trying to I'm give you a little bit. Of what, what, the commitment is not to sharing the gospel. The commitment is not to helping people. It's, that's not their commitment. Their commitment... Their commitment is found in Luke 9, 24 through 23. Love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. I, we're going to talk about that next week, that they are in love with Jesus. They have totally sold out. They love God. Total commitment. Total commitment. It's not being committed to uh, clean, uh, clean the building. Total commitment is not making dinners. Total commitment is not being an usher. Total commitment is not preaching sermons. That's not total commitment. That could be selfish gain. Total commitment is, Lord, everything I got begins with you. Totally committed. I'll deal with that next week. But this week I want to deal with 
What is commitment? Let's look at this word in the translation of this Hebrew and this Greek word called commitment. What do those people have? Tim, I want it. We make mistakes of giving people out. We say, we say, d dub come to Jesus. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you'll grow and be committed later. Huh? I'm going to show you that's not metric opposed to what God says. We don't even have an expectation of people being totally committed as soon as they say yes to Jesus. We say stuff like, you'll grow into it. Well, I'm going to challenge you through the scriptures. What does the scripture say? Is that what God says? No, that's not biblical. Yes, it happens, but it ain't right. And I truly believe that the church is the way it is, and I love you to death, is because people are not totally committed. We have a total commitment problem because we're waiting for people to grow into commitment. Because we don't hold commitment as the entrance. Nobody in here, if you married, raise your hand. Hey man, married people, beautiful thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Singles are a beautiful thing. But all of us who are married, and I've married a beautiful woman. Amen? Matter of fact, I tell the story all the time. The Bible helped me get her. Talking to her on the phone. She thought, well, you, I love God. And I said, I love him too. She said, well, I love God's word. I said, do you do what God's word say? She said, absolutely. I said, well, John 1 and 6. She said, what that say? I said, won't you read it? She said, know it. She picked it up and said, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. I said, hey, hey. Put a ring on it, baby. It's in the Bible. You can't deny it. Don't tell me the Bible can't help you get a sister. <laughs> I said, I got her. She said, well, I guess it's in the Bible. I said, preacher, do it well before she changed her mind. Let's do it now. Before they found it wasn't talking about me. But seriously, nobody in here who is married, who's going to get married, would walk down the aisle with somebody who says, I'm going to marry you today, but I'm not totally committed. I'm going to totally commit to you down the road on our silver anniversary. But let's go ahead and this ring means I, I, wait a minute, wait, did you just say you ain't totally committed? No, not today. I'm a grow to that girl, come on now with you, I'm a brother. Nobody in here would say, let's do it. All of us would say, deuces. And I submit to you, why would Jesus say to us, it's okay for you to be totally committed down the road. You show me in the scriptures. You show me in the scriptures. You show me anywhere in the scriptures where Christ said something like, you can be committed to me after you learn how good I am. What you mean, learn how good I am? I took care of you when you wasn't saved. I was the one who saved you. I saved your grandma. I was the one that woke you up. I was the one that gave you the job. I was the one that got you out of jail. I was the one that kept you when you was on crack. And you tell me you can't commit to me? It's not biblical. So pastor, you good to tell us what is not committed. What is Total commitment. Are you totally committed? First of all, first of all, commitment in the Hebrew language, we'll deal with this on Wednesday. There's a word called gal law. Gal law. The word for commitment, there's a lot of them. We're using the word gal law. It's also the word sim. In the Hebrew language, we'll deal with that on Wednesday. Benefits to come to Bible study. There's benefits to coming. 
God law. It means to commit. Reference scripture number one, Psalms 37.5, Erica. Derica. Psalms 37.5. We will see the use of this word commit to deduce and to learn what commitment means. Reference scripture number one, Eric, Psalms 37.5, okay? We see that what the Bible says about commitment, okay? And it's it's in the Hebrew text, okay? No, it's definition number five, Eric. I'm sorry, definition number five. She's probably looking for it, it's on me. Definition Number one, Erica, not reference, definition number one, Psalms 37, 5. Psalms 37, 5, let's look at it. That's why it's good to bring your Bible, okay? Psalms 37, 5, here it is, okay? Psalms 37, 5, commit your ways to the Lord, okay? Trust in him and he will do this. Psalms 37, 5, okay? We see that word Psalms 35, it says, commit your way to the Lord, okay? Okay? I think that is um, 37.5. Commit your way to the Lord, there it is. There it is, the word commit to the Lord, trust in him, and he will what? Do this, okay? We see that in the Hebrew language, it is God law, and it means to... Roll. If you put that different definition back up, it means to roll something. It is to roll something away. To trust. Look at that. It means to roll or to trust. Literally or figuratively, it means to roll or to trust something. Okay? So if you are committed, then it means you have to give up something to roll something away. Like if a burden or something, no, it did not say throw it away or cast it. A commitment means to roll, which means it's so heavy, I can't even lift it, and I sure can't carry it. So therefore, to get rid of something, I have to do what? Roll it away. We will deal with that. It means to roll something something away to be totally committed what you're saying is I can't do this I have to totally roll something get something away from me I can't do it I can't do it now since we understand that let's turn to reference scripture number four Luke 9 23 reference scripture number five I'm sorry Luke 9, 18 through 27. If you are committed, I want you to look at your life and say, are you committed? Are you totally committed? We understand commitment means to roll something away. To trust something. To trust, okay? Jesus was praying in private with his disciples. With him. And he asked him a simple question. Julia, he says, hey y'all, who do people say that I am? Verse 19. Yeah, they said, some say John the Baptist. Some say you Elijah. Others, that you wanted the prophets from long ago to come back to life. Verse 20. Here's the question. What about you? Who do, now watch this. Who do you say I am? You know what the world says. You're a prophet, blonde haired, blue eyed devil. Okay. Everybody got their opinion of who Jesus is. He said, that ain't the question. The question is who you say I am. And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now watch this, in other translation in Matthew, he tells Peter, he say, Peter, you got it right, who I am. But Peter, you didn't get it right because you all that. He said, you got it right, flesh and blood have not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven, 
have revealed that to you. So if you understand who Jesus is, don't go pop with your chest out. Go, go walk around thinking you all that and your stuff don't stink. The only reason you know who Jesus is because the Holy Spirit has revealed himself to you. You ain't no better than nobody else because you know that Jesus is the Messiah. What you ought to do is get on your knees and say, thank God for the Holy Spirit revealing himself to me. I was in darkness and the Holy Spirit revealed. So if you are here today and the Holy Spirit and you say Jesus is God, he ain't no prophet, it's only because, it's only because, it's only because, not because you got in jail and you need God. There's a lot of people in jail that don't think that Jesus Christ is the Lord. It's not because he healed your body. There's a lot of people who've been sick and bodies got healed and still don't say Jesus is the Lord. It ain't got because of job that you don't deserve. A lot of people got jobs they don't deserve. It's because the Holy Spirit. Has revealed to you who God is. That messianic title Messiah, you are the chosen one. You are a bag of chips and all that. He says, blessed are thou son of our daughter for flesh and blood. Now we're talking about commitment. He asked him that question. Put that back up there, Erica, please. Put that scripture back up there. Verse 21. Hey, Peter got it right. Now watch what Jesus does. Watch this, Renita. He says, now, strictly warned y'all. Y'all got it right. Who I am. But I'm telling you. Don't tell anyone. Jesus, you just wanted to know what we thought about you, but yet you warning us strictly. Yeah. It's like your mom looking at you. Yeah. Get up. Jesus strictly warned them, don't you tell anyone. Now watch this. We're talking about commitment now. That makes no sense. But let's look at verse 22. While they're puzzled, Jesus says in verse 22, the son of man, let me say it in himself, I must suffer many things. And I'm going to be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your kids, your boss, your neighbor, Your co-workers, I'm going to be rejected. This is what's going to happen to me now. And he says, watch this. And I must be killed. But on the third day, I'm going to get up. Watch this commitment now. Do you know who I am? You're the Messiah. Okay, don't run your mouth too quick. Because I'm telling you what's going to happen to me. And look at verse 23. <sighs> then it gets good. Then he says, before you start wanting to run your mouth, before you buy your I'm sold out t-shirt, well. <laughs> before you put the scripture reminder to come on your thing every Sunday, every day, before you put it all in your house and ask for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, before you do any of that, you got the answer right, but you need to know this before you start running your mouth, before you start running down the road, talking about he is Lord. He says, you need to know this. This you must know. Whoever, now watch this. Oh, watch this, Tangy. Watch this, Tangy. It gets good, sis. Watch this. Notice he's with his disciples, but look at verse 23. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. It gets good. Watch this, Porter. He talking to them. He said, who do y'all say that I am? They said, you the Messiah. He said, now y'all, y'all don't tell nobody this. Then he raised up and he told everybody, hey, any of y'all want to be my disciples? There's three demands for discipleship. Ta 
Talidotes. Talidotes. Ain't suggestions. Ain't nothing you can grow into. Ain't nothing that you can ask me about. If you pick it up, here's the rules. Three demands. We're going to break the scripture down about total discipleship, total commitment. Verbs. Deny yourself. Take up. First two. If you, you say you know who he is, you sit here and say, I know he's God. I know he's God. I said, shh, shh, before you go run in your mouth. You must know this. There's some demands. Two of them, real quick, and I hope I don't lose you. Two of them are verbs. You're like, I didn't come to school. You're here now. Deny yourself and take up. In the Greek language, you want to impress people, write this down. It's in the aorist tense. The aorist imperative. It's in the aorist imperative. What is the aorist imperative? It implies that an action which is accomplished once. That's it. So when Jesus said, anyone who wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up, now stop right there, that is in the aorist imperative. And what that means is that that is an action that is done one time. Once and for all. This means we must deny ourselves and submit to Jesus and never return to our rebellion. And then after we fall, we get back up and says, I'm going to deny myself. After I've messed up, I'm going to try to deny myself again. And I'm going to pick up my cross and follow you again. Let me break it down because you ain't getting it. He's saying, if you want to come after me, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Here is total commitment. He says, before you go run in your mouth, the first things you have to do in the heirs imperative is deny yourself and take up your cross. Oh, and by the way, that's a one-time thing. Because we say stuff like, ah, I'm going to put my cross down and pick it back up. Or we say stuff like, okay, I'm going to rededicate myself to deny myself. Jesus says, no, you can't be my disciple if you don't do it. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to break it down to you. That means, don't cry, Brooks. The moment you say, yes, Lord, you are saying, I no longer have rights to anything in my life. And guess what? It's once and for all. I love y'all, but married people come down the aisle all the time. I do promise. I love you. I do. I wrote this for you. Beautiful. Three weeks later, I didn't know he would like that. <laughs> Once. Jesus said, so we're going down this aisle. We're going down this aisle. And we go down this aisle, there is no conversation of how we're going to, where we're going to live. Mm, all right. mm. Where you go, there is no more conversation. You have denounced that once and for all.
for all. Who wants to go down now? In the Greek language, that's what he says. He says it's once and for all. He's saying, watch this. When the winds blow, we ain't have no conversation to go and see no counselor. I'm not saying married people shouldn't. I'm saying when you're with Christ. He said, you come to me, I am the counselor. And the counselor's going to say, once and for. Now we're going to do what deny yourself means. He says, and you got to what? Take up. Your cross. Do you understand what he's saying? That blows, Edward of ours, this theory about growing in grace, and growing in commitment, growing in commitment out of the water. If you understand the Greek language, if you understand the Bible, anybody who understands the Bible, he has told them, don't say that. Because if you say you with me, I ain't into this growth stuff. When it comes to commitment. You in there. And some of y'all in here know what I'm talking about. Because you done been married through the thick and through the thin. He ain't always been what he should be. But you in there. Talk to me, somebody. God is saying, I want the same thing. And not only will you denounce what it is you want with your life, if that ain't enough, now you got to pick something up. Pick it up. That cross can never be put down. Never. Even though the load gets heavy. He says, once and for all, you pick up the cross. But you, wait a minute, put that straight back. But you said daily. But you said daily. You says daily. No, understand the Greek language. He is saying daily you remind yourself that you already made a lifetime commitment. It's like when you're married. And you go to the supermarket or wherever you go. And things ain't right at home. You've already made a commitment. Girl, you fine. My husband think I'm fine too. And he ain't talked to you in five weeks, but you still should say, he think I'm fine too. He ain't told me in a while, but he think I'm fine. <laughs> totally. Jesus says, this is the qualification this is the qualification for coming after me. The heiress imperative. It is a one-time deal. So if you deny yourself one time, it ain't no denying yourself uh, 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 every day. That implies, real quick, it's just a teacher in me, watch this, that implies you didn't kill yourself day one. See, what we say is, oh, I messed up, and I'm going to start back over with, and I'm going to deny myself. He says, no, you're not. You're dead from day one. And we're going to deal with well, what happens when I rebel? Denial did not go away. Then, watch this. Oh, this gets good. I'm preaching myself happy. You don't shout, I will. He says, daily, you got to remind yourself of a commitment you already made. Your mouth say I'm Lord, but your actions need to show it. And it's a one-time thing. And we ain't having this conversation over again. I love Terry Claudine Brooks to death, but she ain't hearing me come in the house every day uh, about this marriage thing. About this marriage. She said, no, boy, October, we did that. We already did that. That done. I want to hear about that. All right, done. You committed. I'm committed. To death do you part. To death do me part. So why are we having this conversation again? There is no conversation. Pick up your cross. 
And that daily is not picking up a cross daily. Let me break it down to you. That daily is reminding yourself daily of a commitment that you made to Christ. Then, watch this. He says, and follow me. Lord, please help me not to bore these people. Follow, however, is in the present imperative. Not the heiress imperative, but the present imperative. He says, so total commitment is a one-time thing. Then after you make that commitment one time, and take up your cross one time, and we remind yourself every day that you made that commitment one time, now following me is not a one-time thing. Following me is not in the present imperative, which means every day you get to make a decision. Every day you get to live out the commitment that you already, yeah, you got it. You already made every day. So we don't decide, deny ourselves. We cannot make a decision to pick up our cross. We make the decision how we gonna follow. Yes, sir, Terry, if ain't nothing being you, boy, I'm here to preach. He said, you can't make a decision, boom, but you can make a decision every day of your life how you gonna follow me. But the decision that you are mine ain't in question. But how you follow me, he says, and follow me. Now watch this. Totally committed means renouncing all claims of your whole entire life the day you say yes to the Lord. I don't care about you joining no church and then you say 15 years later you want to commit. What? Deny. Deny yourself. Everyone in the Roman world, Torrance, knew what Jesus meant in the Roman world. Now watch this. Oh, Wanda Thomas. Notice what he said. He didn't say die. He said what? Deny. You don't die first. You deny. And everybody in the Roman world knew what he meant. Before you die, you got to deny. And that becomes the struggle. I ain't dead yet. (laughs) But I got to deny that I want to cuss you out. (laughs) Jesus. Jesus. You want me to, yes. You got to deny. We had said, I died the cross. Uh Uh-uh. Look at the analogy of the cross. Look at the analogy of the cross. He says when Jesus picked up the cross, he didn't die. He picked it up first. He denied himself. He gave up all his humanity. He gave up all his godliness. And he lowered himself to the death, the death on the cross. But before you can die to some of your urges, before you can die to some of your lifestyles, before you can die to some of the stuff, you got to first deny it. You got to go through the pain of being detoxicated. Detox. And detox is hard when you've been sitting long and hard, when you've been in some stuff for a long time. It would have been better if you said, kill me, but now I still got these urges. I still got this mindset. But you're saying, I got to... And it's a one-time thing, Jesus? He said, yes. You still interested in this thing called discipleship? Secondly, Romans crucified 
criminals. Deny yourself. Not die. First you deny yourself. Jesus is keep moving. He said, no, you got to do this. Watch this now. Let me break the scripture down to you. He says, deny yourself. What does that mean? Romans did not put anybody on crosses except the worst of the worst. So Jesus says, you first got to deny before you die. How many know that's rough? Some of you here are still denying, but you ain't dead yet. Then he says, pick up your cross. Listen to me. Don't you cry, Brooks. Only criminals, the worst of the worst, go on cross. And the first step of denying yourself is self-realizing you ain't no good. We got to stop saying stupid stuff like, I ain't all that. Yes, you are. I didn't do what Jeffrey Dahmer did. You just as bad as Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, yes, you are. In your sin nature, in your sinful state, that you are worthy of a cross, that you are the worst of the worst. Charlotte, I believe that's the problem with the church. Too many of us walking in here thinking our stuff don't stink. We think we all that. We think just because somebody mess up big time and go to jail or sell drugs or murder somebody, we say, I ain't as bad as them. You ain't denied yourself. That's yourself trying to say, I'm better than everybody else. I'm just as good as that person. Self-denial looks in the mirror and it's a hard thing to do and say, I really ain't no good. I got a degree, but I'm still no good. I stopped cussing, but I'm still no good. That's why Jesus said there's nobody good. And when you deny yourself, you say, I am worthy of the cross. Care about you getting mad at me? Everybody here, including me, is worthy of a cross. You worthy of a cross. Deny self. And watch this. Roman crucifixions, they didn't hang them on the cross first. Mm. They hung the cross on you. Jesus, before he went to the cross, they had to give him his cross first. Deny yourself. And watch this. Watch this, Justin. Watch this, Justin. Watch this, Justin. Romans would have understood this, that people who got on the cross, Justin, nobody, nobody volunteered for the cross. The cross was what? Thrust upon you. Self-denial is renouncing all your rights, understanding how bad you are, and then, watch this, Koya, raising your hand and saying, hey, crucify me. Most of us, John Brooks included, ain't going to admit how bad we are until you get caught. When you get caught, you want to get holy. Yeah, I guess that's what we got to take. You, you, you volunteering. But he's saying what really needs to happen in self-denial is that before you reveal, he says you need to raise your hand and say, I am the worst. I will pick up the cross. I am worth this death. And thirdly, in the Roman world, picking up the cross was a one-way ticket. Denying. One-time decision. It's a one-time, it's a one-way ticket. In the Roman world, they understood crosses. Was, when you picked up that cross, you wasn't coming back. Wasn't no visitation hours. Wasn't no release date. That means I'm volunteering to pick this thing up and I'm going to die. And watch this. Take it up daily. The attitude of Christ. Now watch this. We say follow Jesus. Self-denial. You know what self-denial following Jesus is? 
That's what you have a choice in. Jesus is saying this here. And we say this here biblically, Garrett. We say this stuff biblically, but it's not biblical at all. And I love you to death. We say this here, I'm just following Jesus. I'm just, where, where he leads me, I will follow. When he said follow here, he was saying, no, I already died. I'm in heaven now. You're not following me. The Bible says you got to look to me. Don't follow me. Physically, you don't follow me. He says you follow the example I've already gave. So when he says follow Christ, every day you get up and say, I have to make a decision if I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to have to make a decision. Am I going to live like Christ? Am I going to love my enemies like Christ? Am I going to treat my children like God told me to treat my children? Am I going to go to church like God told me to go to church? Am I going to love the Lord God with all my heart, mind, body, and my soul? Every day you get up. It ain't just what you're going to eat, oatmeal or uh, sausage or your cholesterol. No, you also got to deal with this issue of what you're going to deal with with Jesus, how you gonna live for Christ, what your lifestyle gonna be like, how your house is gonna be, how your children is gonna be, how your tone is gonna be, how your apparel is gonna look like Jesus. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Or you gonna stop on your way and treat somebody like Jesus? Say, Jesus said, I done already laid out the path. You saw the life that I live, you saw the love that I be. He says, Follow my example. Renounce your mouth. Notice when you pick up your cross, you deny yourself, you're not dead. And you may be saying, Pastor Brooks, that's tough. See, see, they may be saying, that's tough. That's tough, Pastor. That can't be done. One time deal, and we'll deal with it next week. One time deal, are you totally committed? Have you made that one time decision? We make this thing a process. No, we'll talk about that next, no! Next Sunday, and I used this example of my deacons yesterday. Next Sunday at 5.30, Central Time, Patrick Mahomes is going out on the field against some team called the 49ers or something. Let's go get them, Kelsey. Pacheco, let's go get them. Rice, Valdez. Let's go about this. Come on, Jones. Come on, Sneed. Come on, come on. Come on, buckle up. We're going to give you the kick. Let's go. Go. You know, by the way, Patrick, we're not totally committed. If we see we winning, then we're going to commit to you. Patrick will say, hold it. So we just go out here, and y'all ain't totally committed. So if we get behind by 21 points, you're going to quit on me. If I don't throw you the ball, you're going to get mad. Tell you what, stay in the locker room. Because when we take the field, I need to know whether the times are good or bad. You committed. And if we go down, we all go down. So we take the field, commitment happens in the locker room. Commitment doesn't happen on the scoreboard. Don't be shouting hallelujah when we get ahead. Commitment is I don't know what the scoreboard is going to end at the end of the day. But I'm going to give everything I got, Patrick, to do the best I can to win this Super Bowl. And we got it better than Patrick because they going out there not knowing what the score going to be. But we know what the score going to be. So when we line up every Sunday, are you with me, Weaver? Are you with me, Warren? Are you with me, Mac? Are you with me, Rope? Foreign country boy, are you with me? We taking the field, Darwin. We already know what the score is going to be. Three days later, he rose again. All power. So I'm committed. Why wouldn't I be committed? And I already know the score. Why wouldn't I be committed when I already know a new heaven and a new earth? Why wouldn't I be committed when he has all power? So Jesus is saying to us, will you take the field? Be totally committed. 
committed. You're going to fall down. You're going to drop some balls. But guess what? The victory is already won. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know this thing can be done? How do you know, Brooks? That seems impossible. How do you know that it's already done? Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Looking unto him who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the prize set before him endured the shame. Jesus did it. Guess what? And I don't know about you. Sign me up. I am totally here's my life I stand before you my life is in your hand to you I belong I give myself I give myself I give myself to you my life is not my own we said Christians, we want to hang on to different parts of our life, and we say this unbiblical thing. I have not yielded a part of my life. My homes would not go on the field with some receivers who are not committed. Commitment don't mean you ain't gonna drop the ball. Commitment means I'm gonna try my best. I don't want no diggies that ain't committed. I don't want no preachers that ain't committed. I don't want no interns. Don't you apply if you ain't committed. It's gonna be, it's gonna get tough. We're gonna get mad at each other. But are you committed? 